it's live. It's good. It's We're always good. live. Okay. Sometimes you, you capture the best moments <laughs> without knowing. Yeah. So everything you said before. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, don't. No, no that. we're not bringing that up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that would be on camera. No, it wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the dildo. Oh, oh that bit. Yeah. No, we were talking yeah, about the other bit. The <laughs> no, other bit. Bring that up. That, what was the other yeah. bit? Oh, that was a good part. Loves it. Uh, how are we doing, everybody? You're here with Trackside with PR. And we've got special guests Johnny Ricker from Race Parts Melbourne and Andy from Automotion. Andy tunes John race cars, all around top guys. We met them through, I guess, when John purchased his, his first Huracan. Yeah, I guess he was lucky enough to um, uh, <laughs> purchase one of the V10s that we highly modified. Yeah. Um, and the, the first one, I'm sure a lot of people have been watching through the Street Machine. What was it? The Street Machine? Drag Challenge. Drag Challenge? Yeah. So that was the grey, the LP610, the 2014 model, right? Yeah. Uh, and we built that a few years ago now. Um, that stage package sort of is no longer because things have developed, I guess. And this was a new thing for you, right? Because this is... It was, you know, we're sort of used to our VL stuff, our, with our RBs and all that. And um, then we moved on to the pro mods and sort of the Hemi twin turbo sort of side of racing. And then, um, yeah, I'd, it just worked out that I ended up buying a 35 GDR, a Nismo edition. I was lucky enough to buy it just before they jumped up in price. So... Uh, I think six weeks later, they doubled in price and then Holy moly. I was Crazy, able yeah. to work out a deal and get the grey hurricane. So it worked out really good. So I was lucky. So how long did you have the Nismo? I had it for six, seven weeks. <laughs> You're yeah. joking. Yeah. So I had a feeling that they were going to go up <laughs> and I thought, you know what, I'll try and buy an, a Nismo. And um, there was one available. And it happened to be five minutes from my house. I had a few cars at the time, so I had a a yellow VL that had ran sevens, a CV8 Monaro with like a big cube aspirated engine in it, a VL and a few other bits and pieces. Anyway, I sold it all off and I just scraped up enough money to buy the Nismo 35 and I copped it from, from <laughs> everyone. Like, why are you selling a genuine yellow VL for a Nismo, yeah. like some GDM, Skyline, junk. GDR, whatever they are? Yeah, yeah I said, look, I've, I've got a feeling they're going to go up. Just They were talking about like stopping... The, the importation yeah, of yeah. them yep. into Australia. Yeah. So, yeah, worked out good. So wow. I was able to sell that, jump into the hurricane. So, yeah, I was sort of having a look around and I seen it was advertised on car sales and reached out to a few guys I knew up in Sydney and, um, yeah, made contact and we worked out a deal and got Did it Did you done. drive it before you jumped in, before you made the deal? I didn't. I seen <laughs> it. He told me to get in it and go for a drive and... I didn't want to get in the passenger seat yeah. with him. <laughs> and um, I, I'm not real keen on getting the passenger yeah. seat with anyone. Yeah. So yeah, like I, me. yeah, I had a look at it, sounded good, looked good. I'd seen videos, so I knew yeah. what it was capable of. Yeah. And I thought, yeah, I wouldn't mind getting it, trying yeah. it and having a nice street car. And yeah, so that all eventuated and yeah, it was, it was awesome. Like I was blown away when I got it back home and actually got to drive it and mm. um, enjoy it a bit and, it's a very different power to what you're probably used to. It really is, yeah. Yeah, just acceleration and just how good it drives. Like you can drive it like a standard car yeah. and then, you know, obviously you put your foot into it and the thing runs, you know, knocking on 180 mile an hour. So Yeah, yeah. crazy. Um, yeah, so it was, it was cool and I was, I was wrapped that we got the deal done. So, yeah. yeah. Awesome. And you got into it while spending, I guess, Nismo GDR money that was sort of exactly. from a few years ago, not necessarily the – the inflated market yeah yep yeah. because yeah, i copped the whole oh how'd you afford to get this where'd mm. you get the money from to mm. buy this but it literally didn't cost me that much so yeah. it worked out good mm. very lucky yeah very good i was yeah and then we entered well drag challenge was coming up and we're sort of thinking oh none of the other cars like we were hoping to do it in our vl and i thought oh it's not going to be ready i said let's have a crack with the um the Lambo is something different yeah so then like three days before it we um <laughs> we had it at the <laughs> shop and we're like, all right, so where are we going to put <laughs> our stuff? Yeah. Like anything. we couldn't put our bags with our clothes in it for the week or yeah. anything. There was nowhere to put anything. And we're sort of scratching our head and we're like, oh, maybe we'll put the bags on top of Andy in the passenger seat or something. <laughs> like, I, I, I don't know. And um, the boys went to Autobahn to get yeah. something. I can't even remember what it was. And um, we seen it was sitting there. They seen the pod sitting there and <laughs> took some photos while they were there. And <laughs> Will this work? Me. And at first I'm like... I just 
sort of like idiots Whatever, yeah. and uh, yeah. got rid of it. Yeah. And then I was like, hang on, they could be onto something here. And I had a good look at it. I'm like, I wonder if we can make it work. And then, yeah, we tracked down those suction things from Adelaide. Yeah. <laughs> Someone that was leaving from Adelaide to come to Drag Challenge that day went and picked them up for us, bought them for us. And yeah, we well. fitted it that so morning. this was two days before the start of Drag <laughs> Challenge. So the morning of drag challenge, we got the suction cups, put it on the roof, and I wasn't game enough to put anything in it on the way to Heathcote. Oh, um, just, yeah. So I thought, let's test put it, it on and we'll test it. We'll see if it comes off on the highway. And I got to Heathcote and I looked and it was still on there. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, this is all right. This and, might work, um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, we end up getting through the week, so. Yeah, that's sick. And you were both in the car together? The whole the whole trip. We were. Yeah. How many yeah. Ks? 1,800. Yeah. yeah, wow. Yeah, 1,700 or something. It was just you two in the car together the whole week. Yeah. yeah. And so how many Ks? It was about 1,800 Ks wow. and it was a different track each day. Yeah. So five tracks, five days. And that um, car's like sacked and delicious. So it's definitely not the best ride. Oh, the problem was there was a lot of, there was a lot of rain early in the year and a lot of the roads were stuffed from the trucks. Oh, that's got street um, R's on it too. It does, yeah. yeah. So look, it actually drove pretty good in the in the wet weather. Yeah. Um, but the roads had sort of mounded up from the trucks. Yeah. And there was a few we went across, oh. and you could just sort of hear it scraping. <laughs> and I thought, oh, I'm not looking forward to seeing it up on the hoist. But once yeah, we good. actually got up on the hoist, there was yeah. nothing even noticeable under there. So yeah, yeah, I think it just sounded worse than it was. <laughs> Yeah, That's probably so some cool. scrubbing from the front tires as well, the right? Front that is oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It just, yeah. You, that's all you'd hear. It just it sounded like the horn. You're beeping the horn. Just yeah. Just touching on so it. So let's just um, break this down for the people that don't really understand that 1800k thing. So from your shop, where was first stop? And where's your shop in Melbourne? So we're in Point Cook. So we're about 15, 20 minutes from the CBD to the west, right. south southwest of Melbourne. Yep. So day one, before we even started, we had to drive about almost two hours to, to Heathcote to sign in yep. on the day. So we, we had the sign in day. We ended up leaving the car there overnight and drove home in my Colorado. Yep. Yeah. Then we rolled up the next morning and that's it. Once you roll up on the start of the race day, the race week. You're in. You can't touch any other support cars or anything. Yep. You have to have all of your tools, all of your, whatever you need for the week in the car with you or in a trailer in the back but obviously we couldn't have a trailer on the back so we put the roof pod on it and um yeah we were able to get everything we needed to get through the week what did you do for fuel we had 30 liters of fuel in the front of the um boot which would have been so i went and we we bought containers that fit perfect and we had 30 but pretty much we just tried to work around the e85 servos so we had a hard time from um what would you call officials Uh so (laughs) understandable the car's going quicker than yeah safe just all the safety requirements it's more just a roll cage Mm -hmm. and obviously a shoot We, we were only able to do one pass at each track each day and then we got our marching orders so the first day we staged on the front bar so we didn't realize but there's that sort of lower rubber that hangs underneath the bars and it caught the beam and i'd done the pass and i rang aaron and we couldn't work out why it was so slow in the front half like the mile an hour was there but just the the et (coughs) was out and um yeah then aaron said oh maybe it's getting caught on the, the front, strip in the beam with the the front rubber so but we'd already done our pass so we ran a what was it a nine nine two something? yeah i was gonna say like nine two i think a nine twenty yeah. at 168 yeah, mile an hour remember. maybe yeah. so i think the big the biggest thing that triggered me was um the 60 foot time yeah and i was like nah man yeah this... well it went like a one eight in the 60 yeah. foot and we knew that i could tell yeah. just by driving that it, it went better. quicker yeah. than a one eight and yeah. um so we knew something was up and then as soon as we rolled up to Mildura. Mildura. Uh, no, it was oh, Portland. Portland. Yeah. Portland was day two. So from Heathcote to Portland is about a four and a half hour drive at the best of times, like wow. doing the speed limit. They were bad roads, <laughs> those ones too. Yeah, it was horrible. Get getting into Portland, they were really bad. And um yeah, so anyway, we filled up, so we left Heathcote. Got to Bendigo, filled up E85, so we brimmed the tank. And we were able to get to Portland without even touching the fuel in the front. And we still had over a quarter of a tank left. Yeah, I was going to say, when you're cruising, they don't actually use that much fuel because it's it's running on the, the direct injectors. Yeah, so it was fine. It, yeah. it really didn't drink that much. And then, um, yeah, we did one pass at Portland. Portland, yeah. 
I can't remember what it ran now. And that's when you staged up correctly. Correctly. And it staged up like correctly. two tenths straight off the 60 as well, I remember. Yeah. So. Yeah. I think it was in the one fives, wasn't it? Yeah. Well, like a one, one Which is back to where it should something. be. Yeah. Yeah. So then we knew straight away, all right, yeah. But even in that, you know, you go into stage, you see the lights come on and then you go a little bit further, light switch off drop again. back off and then come back. And then it picks it back up on the tyre again. Yeah. So, so yeah. you knew straight away at that point that's what the problem was in the, in the 100%. previous. 100%. Yeah. 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 Yep. Yep. And I think I rang you straight away and I said, oh, it's, yeah. Yeah, it's sorted. Yeah. <laughs> we, we fixed found, it. We found the issue. We <laughs> <laughs> found the issue. It's not normally that though. Yeah. And then um, day three was at Mildura, yeah. which was a big drive, that one. So I think we drove up through the Grampians, up through the mountains, and that was awesome. I've never nice been drive. through there. It was awesome, so yeah. So what's the distance or time Oh, driving. that was like it been six hours or so a drive. I think just wow. that drive was over eight hundred k's. But they Holy they shit. pick the route that you've got to drive, so you have to stop at checkpoints along the way and take photos with the vehicle, so they see that you've gone Proof. that route. Yeah. So yeah, it's pretty well organised by the guys. Yep. There's photographers along the way. Yeah. Checkpoints, and they also go and check and pick the best roads and stuff like that for you to drive down as well. So. Yep. That's really yeah. cool. I want to do it. Yeah, really, it's really well organized. Awesome. Yeah, yeah, it really is. It's a good event. Like we we do a lot of a lot of stuff, like you know, radio racing, all the big events. But there's something about it's the drag to it. it's, it's cool. Yeah. yeah. Did you just fun. drive with a couple other cars or other friends or? Uh, it's a bit hard because people stop at different times. Guys' cars start getting a bit hot. They pull over for half an hour. We had the aircon on. We, <laughs> we were just cruising along. You weren't um, going to make it a ten hour trip. Uh, nah. Instead of eight, yeah, yeah no, nah, we just cruised it. So we got yeah, to okay. the pub each night, had a good meal each night. A lot of guys weren't so lucky. Um, <laughs> I'm sure if we did in our yeah. VL, we uh, would have been one of those guys <laughs> eating out of a <laughs> Bay Marie at a server oh, that food's shit. been sitting there for about six oh, hours or something. Yeah. So, with dirty hands, yeah. with dirty hands for sure. Yep. So the yeah, so eight hour trip. Where are we heading again? So the good thing was there was an E85 servo. Uh, once we got through the Grampians, yeah. I can't remember what stall. Stall, so there was one there. So we yeah. were able to fill our tank. We just got there too. Wow. We brimmed the tank again, filled up our jerry cans in the front, and then we got to Mildura. So then, um, yeah, ran at Mildura again. We pretty much ran identical time that what we did at Portland. These are half mile tracks, or, or they're both eighth. Yeah. yeah. Oh, sorry, yeah. eighth mile. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So Portland and Mildura eighth, and Heathcote was quarter. Yeah. 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 Then we got back to Heathcote and we took it easy. On the Friday night, um, I was backing off the throttle around the thousand foot, I think, and we're rolling through for like nine ones, nine O's at like 120 something mile odd an mile an hour. Yeah. And, and that was just so that they didn't can you from. So I didn't get kicked out. Yeah. Because yeah. I'd been warned not to um, exceed a yeah. nine O at 165 mile an hour. Yeah. So the Friday we were we were well under that, so that that wasn't an issue. Then Saturday come along and um, we. So it was back to back Staged. at, at Heathcote. Yeah. yeah. So we staged correctly at in a 155, 156, whatever it did in the 60. And um, I thought I got off it in enough time, yeah. but uh, not quite. And it went at 867. Wow. At Whoops. 173. <laughs> How did you so think that you got off it? <laughs> He thought the finish line was further down. Right, yeah. okay. Well, the car's been 179 mile an hour, yeah, so yeah. I did get off yeah. it, but... Not much before yeah. the end. Not much before the yeah. end, so yeah. I didn't wash off, wash off quite enough, yeah. and uh, yeah, I got a pretty... <laughs> stern uh, talking stern to Stern talking yeah. to I'm pretty sure I got a phone call. Yeah. There was quite a few yeah. people <laughs> that got phone calls, and um, yeah, it was, it was made clear... That I was to pack the car up and not to race ever again, pretty much <laughs> ever with, again. with with the uh, with that car. With that car, oh, lucky, so lucky you've got a new car now. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. New so color, new, 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 new car. car. <laughs> we're, we're undercover now. Um, <laughs> this one's slower, and yeah. this one's heaps slower. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's heaps slower. Yeah. Yep. Um, yeah. So I'm sure we'll be talking about the new one. Yeah. Shortly. Soon, yeah. Yeah, nice. Let's, but, let's do yeah, it. Yeah, now look, it's a great week, so I, I recommend it to anyone that wants to do it. It's, we have it's to do awesome. It. I've yeah. been saying I wanted, I've wanted to do it with some friends since we were like 18. Yeah. Just never had the car to do it. But I probably could have done it in the Mustang, but then. The Mustang would have been good for mm, it. Yeah, yeah, it would have been cool. Mm, yeah. Anyway, that ship sailed. We'll, um, what, what kind of times did the car need to do to be competitive? Come up, like, you guys um, won it the year prior, right? Is that right? Or, so or we've second? still got the quickest 
six cylinder, six cylinder. to yep. ever do drag challenge and the only six cylinder to run a seven and yep. finish drag challenge. Uh, that was in my yellow VL. Yep. Um, so that was cool. So we come runner up in Outlaw Blown, which was the class we were in, which was any engine combo. So like the car that won it is a mate of ours, Harry. He's got yep. a big block with what, twin 88s 88s. So yeah, it's yeah, well. a big horsepower, big engine, um, big tyre, 315s. Yeah, so he won it, we come runner up. And that year that we done it, Frank from Dandy Engines won it. And I think he ran a 730 wow. that yeah. year. Wow. So uh, I think overall in the VL, we finished fifth yeah, overall right. that year. Pretty yeah. competitive field. Like, wow. Especially yeah. to be driving 1,800 Ks. So yeah. I think if you want to run at the front of the pack, you need to be running like 750s yeah, to wow. be competitive at the front. Yeah. Um, but, you know, each year that goes on, guys are getting quicker and quicker. So, you know, this year potentially all yeah. these cars that have ran, you know, mid-sixes. Yeah. Um, but it's it's a bit harder at drag challenge because... Yeah. Track dependent too and... Yeah. yeah they're the tracks not, aren't great. They're not really radial prep tracks and, you know, it's a bit harder. You've got to pull a bit of power out to get them to get down and um, yeah, that. But, is yeah. the rule radial only or is it everyone no. runs a radial because you've got to then drive to the next track? Uh, there's cars on slicks and that as well. Are they changing them for, yes. the, for the run? Yeah. Yep. Right, so okay. anything on a slick is in outlaw blown right. altogether. Yep. Um, they actually have to be on some sort of a race tyre, whether it be a drag radial or a drag slick. So yes. um, no straight tyres. Yeah. So, People get pretty serious too. Like I watched some of the footage and it was a guy changing his diff ratios at the track yeah. and then different for driving. Yep. Yeah. That's, well, that's <laughs> way too serious. That's too much There's guys changing yeah. rockers. Yeah. Like rocker ratios on cars. You'll see some of the aspirated cars change rocker ratios and that. What for the so street, for the street springs drive, on the street? So yeah. Take oh some my God. Spring God. And, yeah. When I did it in the VL, like I literally didn't pull the exhaust off or anything. We just literally jacked the back up, swapped the tyres over on the rear. And just did the whole week. Yeah. The last two days, I pulled the headlight out, but but that was it. <laughs> and yeah. how did that help you? <laughs> it helped actually. Really? Yeah. yeah, I think we went from like a not much, but I think it went from like a like an eight oh eight or something to a seven ninety one. And what did the speed do? Not much. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So mile an hour, it still went. I think one seventy one ish. So how's one's... the headlight making it faster? <laughs> it I don't know. It's just a VL thing. It's, a... I think, so. <laughs> it's all the weight. Yeah, the yeah, weight, yeah, weight, yeah, yeah, yeah we'll run with the glass. We'll run yeah. with that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It probably but is. Yeah, the way. They just look cool when they got the headlight out. People know it's turbo. So. Yeah, 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 yeah. Or there's something going on there. There's something going on. Yeah. It's not factory. Yeah. yeah. Um, and, th and this is a six cylinder RB30. Yeah. Yeah, with a twin cam head. Twin so, cam head. Yeah, okay. Had the All 26 right. head on it. Yeah. yeah. And cast block. Cast block. It was just a RB30 block. It wasn't a RD or anything. Um, Wet sumped. Grout filled? It was grout filled to about an inch from the top. So we yep. still had water running in the top of the block. So had a factory water pump on it. Yep. And yeah. And it doesn't get the hot. The oil was getting oil hot. Temp would get and hot. we had issues with um, the pressure dropping. Yes. So we put an oil cooler on it. Uh -huh. And as soon as we put that on, oil, pre oil pressure stayed up. Yeah, yeah well, wow. no, that's yeah. good. It made a huge difference. Yeah, interesting. Hmm. Yeah. But. Um, all in all, it was a good week. Yeah, we got through it, it survived and um, yeah. And you loved it. So how, how do you um, compare the week with the VL versus the, the Lambo? Look, they were both both really awesome. good. Yeah. I think the thing with the VL was you, you actually didn't know if you were going to get to the next track <laughs> each day. Yeah. So when you got there, it was really exciting. Yeah. yeah. You know, and then you do a pass and you – check everything you're like all right i think it's still, still live together. i think yeah. the bearings are still in there i think you know all the water's where it should be yeah. so let's yeah. go let's, let's go, go let's, again. Go let's again. try to we'll get to the yeah. next track and probably a little bit more adrenaline we got and, through yeah. the week but yeah look a couple of people have said this over the years and i never really thought much of it but mate i've been to call the park that many times but when I drove in the gates with the VL on that last day of drag challenge, like it was, I don't know, I don't know what the word is for it, but not overwhelming, but it was just. It's like an achievement. like a Yeah, yeah. Like, like just relief, like just rolling in and you're just like, like, yeah, it was just, you almost felt a little bit emotional, you know, like yeah. just rolling in, just thinking, oh, you know, we've got through the week, like I can't believe it. Yeah. We've ran a seven. Um, 
Yeah. Yeah, that's just, sick. That'd be a sick feeling. Yeah. And the thing is, if you run a seven second pass on drag challenge and you actually finish, you get a, a hat as well. So you, you sort of get yeah, added nice. into a bit of a club. Yeah. And, uh, there and isn't a sticker a, for the side window. Like you get a sticker when you finish, pod. but okay. yeah, you don't get. I don't think you get a sticker for sevens, do you? Well, I think there's a seven second hat, but I don't know about a sticker. I don't there's think a hat, and you you sort of get into this yeah. bit of a club. And I think there's only even up until today, I think there's only about maybe ten or twelve cars. Mm. But at that point, there'd only been three cars ever to run a seven and finish drag challenge. I think. Yeah, wow. Yeah. The year we did it, there was another four. Yeah. So there was four of us that did it. I think, and um, yeah, it was exciting. So yeah. Yeah, well, really I guess cool. it proves how difficult it is, right? To to do all that. Yeah, all it's not easy. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Like, I mean, you know what it's like just to drive a seven second RB, you know, 15 the minutes up yeah. the road to the track yeah. is yeah. hard enough, you yeah. know, without trying to dodge cops and everything else. <laughs> yeah. And yeah, yeah to, to get through the whole week, it was, it was unreal. So. so, you guys must be wrecked by the time it's finished, right? I was. So exhausted. You, you. Oh, I've done it in the HQ. The you'd you done it in the VL, but yeah, like you want to sleep for a week. How so, how yeah. was it after the Lambo? Yeah, much. It was still it was better. Like I was still exhausted. Yeah, yeah. after yeah. the week. Yeah. Like you know, you go to the track for one day race, and yeah. by the time you get home, you're buggered. Yeah. So can you imagine driving four or five hours in between, mm. then racing, and then yeah, like it was just, definitely. You didn't feel as wrecked, yeah. but you still a bit more relaxed. Yeah, you still knew that you had done a week's worth of driving and <laughs> yeah, racing. Like sure. even sitting in there, like you were still happy to pull over at a checkpoint, get out, stretch the legs, and and they're not real yeah, comfortable. Like like, not, yeah. yeah, after that long, yeah, they're not. Like, Everyone's like, oh, yeah. you've got aircon, and you're yeah. in, you know, Lamborghini, but like it's you are laid back, you mm, know what they're like. You yeah. sit in low, like it's it's comfy. They're Don't bouncy. get me wrong, it's still better than yeah. Kirky, but yeah, factory yeah. VL seats probably yeah. com- more comfortable. Yeah, yeah. Oh, 100. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, Andy was in the the HQ that won the class that I was in when I come runner up. So yeah, yeah. that was hard work. Yeah, so, yeah, oh, yeah. I think that year, like we broke rockers and um, yeah. What, what engines in this? That had a big block shove in it. So yeah, twin turbo, big block. So yeah, what size turbos? Uh, forty-seven eighteens. So the old school eighty eights. Yeah. Had on it. So. Yeah, nice. And what sort of what sort of power is that making? It went. It's been seven forty. So. Yep. At. Uh, one ninety three, I think. She's moving. So, yeah. I so think one ninety four. Or was it one ninety four? Was it? And what does yeah. it weigh? It's heavy. It's heavy. Yeah. So it's two thousand. Yeah. Uh, what's that in pound? Yeah, it'll be. No, nah, two thousand horsepower. <laughs> oh yeah, sorry. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it'd be making every bit. I would think of that. Yeah, so, yeah. yeah around that. So, yeah. yeah. But holy crap! Yeah, it's pretty cool. Like it's a credit to the dude. He built the thing. Him and his son in his shed. So yeah. yeah wow. Um, How do you know what spares to take? Like, how, what made you bring rockers, or did you bring rockers? Uh, that year we didn't. Uh, Dandy engines and that had spares off their thing, and they actually, oh, they didn't give it to us. They hung it off a silo. <laughs> <laughs> and told us where they hit it, and we had to find it. So yeah, okay. yeah. But everyone—that's the good thing about the oh event. Like God. everyone wants to help everyone, whether you're winning, losing, like competing against each other. Everyone will help everyone. It's yeah. a fun week, like it really is. But yeah, whatever spares you think you need, yeah, don't use them, and you need something else. Yeah, so, I get that. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's, Crazy. that's like the race trailer, right? Yeah. You got everything that you probably <laughs> yeah, a hundred percent yeah, yeah. No, very good. Um, and then race parts Melbourne, John. Uh, when did you start that? I started it in twenty seventeen. Yep. Yep. So yeah, we're just a small speed shop in the west of Melbourne. And, yep. Um, yeah. And what made you do that? So I worked in construction for thirteen, fourteen years. Yep. And I was working out past Geelong, so it was out at a smelter, the old Alcoa smelter out there. And we're pulling that down. I was trying to build a car and I was working from seven in the morning till five every day. And I just couldn't get parts and trying to ring mates, trying to get them to pick up parts. And it was just so hard. And there was nothing in the western suburbs of Melbourne. It's like the closest thing is, you know, 35, 40 minutes away. That's with no traffic. Yep. And if there is any traffic, it was it's just a nightmare. So uh, I think it was much needed. And um, so I thought we'd have a crack. So, but um, yeah, so we started up the business and 
I still worked in construction. Like I, I even still work in construction. Um, yeah. This year, not so much. And last year, probably half of the year, we spent a lot more time racing with a pro mod on that than um, actually working. Yep. But um, yeah, so I, I'd work in the morning in construction from six till 11 or 12. So it's a, a good mate of mine's business and he gives me the flexibility to do whatever, whatever hours I wanted to do, you know, just go to work, make sure everything's running right. Um, yeah. And so I'd work from six till 12, six till two, and then I'd go to the shop and I'd be at the shop till, you know, anywhere between six and eight o'clock most nights. Yeah. Um, That's working on your own stuff or? So what? just trying to do paperwork. Oh, organising shop, organizing shop stuff. Organising shop yep. stuff and all that sort of stuff. Wow. So. Yeah, a lot of people don't know that I still work in construction or worked in construction up until, you know, probably a good – probably half of last year. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so – Yeah, right. Yeah. And when did you start? What was your first job? I actually st – I, I left school when I was 14 and wow. um, I started – it just wasn't for me. I, I wasn't a bad kid. Like yeah. I wasn't a troublemaker or anything. But ADD, just couldn't sit still? 100%. Yeah, yeah <laughs> still I still got it. Didn't want to be there. <laughs> I, I, I have um, concentration issues <laughs> and I, yeah. John constantly disturbs his friends. Yeah. Pretty much. <laughs> that's all, 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 all that sort of stuff. <laughs> and um, So that's year 10, right? 14, early year 10. Uh, Did you finish yeah. year 10? No, nah, nah, I've only got a year eight pass. So it was halfway through year nine. Yeah, wow. Okay. And... Teachers kept ringing my mum. My mum had enough. Rang my dad. Said, "Listen, teachers have had enough. <laughs> he's 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 got to go to work." So, I, my old man just goes, "All right, I'm picking you up tomorrow morning, and you start work." So I, I started work with him. I was still too young to start my apprenticeship, so he had to be 15. Yeah. So I worked the rest of the year with him, and then I started my apprenticeship as soon as I turned 15. What was that doing? Uh, cabinet maker. Yeah. So, yeah. I was wow, a, this is old school, right? What nationality is your dad? Maltese. So, that sounds typical, right? Yeah. I was thinking it has to be something like that or <laughs> yep. Greek or... Yeah, so Maltese and he's uh, very firm. Yeah. Very yep. firm with you. So, um, mm. yeah. Yeah, he, so he, he, took you, he, he took you under his wing and said you're coming to work. He did, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, I started work with him. Um, I worked there for four and a half years. I completed my apprenticeship. By the time I was almost 19 mm -hmm. and then I don't, I wasn't really enjoying it. Um, I wanted to do something else. So then yeah. I ended up getting into demolition and construction, wow. which I worked for 14, 15 years. So just the, the money yeah. was crazy. I was earning, you know, three to four times the amount I was doing. What you would have been doing. Cabinet yeah. making and... Um, yeah, and you know what it's like working with family. You sort of clash, <laughs> clash a bit, and the old logs don't yeah. really. Uh, oh, 100%. Yeah. yeah, yeah, they yeah, don't give in. That's for sure. Yeah, so and stuck I, in the old ways. Yeah, and I, um, yeah, when when I done that, and I enjoyed it. So yeah, I was on the tools for about five six years, and then ended up uh, running most of the company. So yeah, yeah good. then driving around and just making sure everything was under control, and yeah, it was yep. good. So. And the money was good and it's the reason why I can do what I can do today. Yeah, yeah. It was. usually starts with a little bit of g gaining that that income to allow flexibility and freedom. Yeah. Which yep. allowed you to start building race cars, which pushed you to start selling parts. Yeah, so that was a yeah. thing. Like because I started I, – I left school so early, by the time my mates were leaving school, I'd already bought a house. Established. Yeah. I already had a – I built a VH Commodore when I was 18 and mm. that ran a – back then, like that's 20 years ago, I'm almost 39. Um, that was running like 1120s back then. So it was it was yeah. quite quick. Yeah. And, yeah, it just – I think for me it worked out good, leaving school early and like I didn't have school holidays. I didn't have any of that. Like mm. you, go to, you go to work and you work and um, – yeah, and I was just good with my money, so I invested into the right things, and it's Maltese, yeah, hundred percent, hundred percent. So, um, yeah, so it's yeah, it's yeah, all it's, it. it's all panned out all right. Yeah, wow. And Andy, so you've just started uh, Auto Motion, 
This yeah. is fairly recent, right? Yeah, like realistically the last probably month or probably had the keys for a couple of months yeah. trying to set up sort of the last month or so. So, yeah. But you've been yeah. around cars your whole life. Yeah. Yeah, where, where yeah. did that start? What was your first job? Uh, nothing to do with cars. No. So I left school, started year 11 I think it was, um, worked as a glazier um, for JJ King Homes doing aluminium windows. Yeah. Um, but just a car thing. My dad was into cars, my brothers were into cars, so it was sort of just a forced Natural, thing, but yeah. uh, not so much race cars. Dad's into sort of more show car style things, um, does everything himself, like panel paint, all that sort of stuff. So growing up as a little kid, I remember going up the shed, just following him around. So um, yeah, and then one thing led to another. I don't know how I even ended up down the race car thing, <laughs> no, but what was your first race car? How'd you? How'd you my first race car. Or what? First, what was the first car you ever took to the track? A Capri. Yeah. Um, was the first car I ever took. It had a Vortec blown like a V seven blower on a small block Chev. Wow. Um, I think it went like eleven sixty or something like that. Um, I took it to that, but then I never raced again for a long time after that. Um, how old were you then? 18, I reckon. Yeah. Yeah. So, so no P-plated cars at the track, just straight into the Capri? Uh, it was a straight, it was an engineered car. So okay. my first car was a 65 Chev that my dad built for me. Yeah. Um, I helped dad build it, but young and dumb, I sold that. Yes, yeah, so I might have been 19 with the Capri because I sold the Chev, um, bought the Capri and then sold that, kept chopping and changing um, from that. I ended up in a LJ Tirana with a turbo Holden in it. Uh, yeah. We built a turbo Holden for it. That went eight twenty. That's a straight six thing, or ah, uh, sorry, Holden V eight. So okay. three oh eight. Yeah. Yep. Like, yeah. So you like your V eight old school muscle car? That's what I'm picturing right now. Well, as a kid, I did it. Yeah. As a kid, I loved all my Jap stuff. Right. But I was the young brother, and okay. literally, my brothers honestly used to slap me around and. <laughs> Tell me that they were terrible cars. And <laughs> yeah, I always wanted a 34 GDR when I was a kid. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah, that market's gone. And um, <laughs> yeah, so I ended up down the V8 road because of that sort of thing, yeah. I guess. But then I built, yeah, the Tirana. I got dicked for the roll cage at Sydney Dragway. Yep. The cage was terrible and I never knew I was same deal. Back then I was probably, I don't know, 22, 23. Yeah. Um, didn't have any real idea. They dicked the cage, so we cut the cage out, and one thing led to another. Yep. I put a turboed Hemi in that, yeah. uh, like a uh, twin turboed Brad Anderson Hemi. Okay. I wrecked that at Sydney. Um, the at car? The car yep. at Grudge Kings. The car power wheelied real bad, came down, bent the chassis. Yeah, wow. Uh, fractured two. It was two. like at the eighth but mile, it was massive. Yeah. <laughs> massive. Jesus. It's one of the biggest wheelies I've ever seen. Yeah. <laughs> so. Everyone else thought it was great. I didn't yeah. really. So um, <laughs> after that, yeah, hurt my back. Like two years later, I found out I fractured two vertebrae. So <laughs> from what? A, Not from, from the, accident. the accident. Yeah, from the car coming Holy down. Shit. It like bent the chassis at the front. Um, Holy. And that. So it would have looked sick though. It looked good. Yeah. It, I'm <laughs> sorry, it's on YouTube, right? Yeah. Yeah. For it, but Is that's it on about YouTube? it. Yeah, I think yeah. it would be yeah. somewhere. Yeah. I have to find it and show you. Yeah. So, um, so after that, I. Said I didn't want any more race cars. Sold the Tirana, sold the engine first, kept the car for a while, then sold the car. Tracked down my Impala, the 65 day yep. I built. Bought that back, so that's sitting in my shed again now. Nice. Yeah. Um, I was done with race cars and, yeah, then ended up building... An, I bought a chassis car VL that I was building, yep. a six-cylinder thing, and then ended up doing a deal with one of my real good friends on a VL, so now I run that. But even between that, I don't even know how the lock so Yeah, how did you get involved with, with John? I don't know. Yeah, when did I, that, I, that, I, that? I actually don't know. I think it was... So our mate Jared bought yeah. the, red, uh, the red Mustang that we've got yeah. Yeah. and um, he had it in Australia... And really? I think that's right. Got to I meet a lot Jared of you guys. On that car. So I went and joined in on a private test day at Swan Hill that they were running. Oh, that's right. I and that. I got to know the boys a bit there. And then Jared decided to send the car back to the States 
to get a lot of weight out of it, redo it all, and race it over in the states. So, so, so who, then, so who owned the red Mustang at this point? Jared, Ford. Jared. Right. Okay. Yeah. So. so it was the first three second radial car in the country yep. in, in Australia, and it was it was the quickest radial car in the world at one point. Yeah. I think around 2015, 2016. Yeah. Um, so he took it back to TKM Performance over in the States. That's whose car it originally was. That's yep. who built it. And That's how um, I ended up there. Hey? That's how I ended up actually. I, I can't even remember. I've got yeah. a terrible memory. But yeah. Yep. And then I heard Jared was going and I always wanted to go and watch some of um, Duck's events over there. So yep. uh, he was going to race at Sweet 16. And I asked if I could tag along. I said, can I give you a hand, you know, crew on the car, whatever you need, I'll, I'll do, you know. And um, he said, yeah, no problem. So me and my mate David booked our tickets like a week beforehand. The, the missus wasn't happy. <laughs> yeah. her. And um, we flew over to the States. At this point, Andy had already been there for five weeks. Yeah, I went over for six weeks all up. So when Jared bought it, we originally built Jared a one-tonner, HQ holding with a big block Chev in it. Um, that was the first ever seven second drag week car. So same deal, natural progression. He's ended up in the Mustang. So I became good friends with Jared through all of that. Um, so I went with him to America for six weeks all up. Yeah. We basically redone the whole car, like the car, new front clip doors, try to get weight out of it, move turbos, wiring, plumbing, all that sort of stuff. Yeah. Um, and yeah, so that's probably where it all sort of started to kick off a bit more in in a more serious yeah, manner, in a more serious way. Like yeah. prior to that, yeah, yeah, like I had the Tirana and stuff like that. But yeah, then when John ended up over there, so I rolled up there, and the first day I got there, Jared goes. Oh, well, I said to Jared, I said, keep an eye out. I said, if you see anything worth buying, <laughs> I, I might be interested in. You know, nothing too crazy, but I said, you know, something that runs like 450s, 50s, somewhere sort of in that sort of oh, mm. high sort of four-second range. Yep. And as soon as I rolled up there, he pulled me aside. Like, we literally just got there and he's like, do you want to buy this? The red <laughs> Mustang. And I'm like, oh, look, it's a bit extreme, you know, yeah. for I, I don't even know if I can drive this car. I went from running my VL that had been 50s in the eighth to this thing, he just ran a 383 in it. So um, I'm like, I don't know. He goes, and I said, look, I, I don't really have the money either at the moment. And he goes, look, I'm not in a hurry. There's no stress if you if you want it, you know, we can work something out. And then I had a couple of days to think about it. And um, <laughs> that was that. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, I'll, I'll take it. And then he, he's like, you know, just work out you know, what you need to do. And he goes, I'm pretty flexible. You can pay me when you can. So without him giving me that option, I wouldn't even, I don't think I'd be where you are now, where yeah. we are now, what, yeah. we're, what we're doing now, to be honest. So the car stayed over there then after that. Yeah. yeah. So um, the car ended up staying over there. And six months later, there was a couple of big events that Duck had in October, which was No Mercy 10. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it was No Mercy and then Sweet 16 or something, wasn't it? No Mercy, then Lights Out, Oh, I was think. it? Yep. yep. And, um, yeah, so in that meantime, I come back home. I sold my yellow VL. I sold – I had a 32 GDR with an OS88 sequential yeah. and that, that i just finished. So I sold that and I scraped up enough money to fix Jared up for the car. Yeah. And then – this was a turnkey car, like a complete... Turnkey, yeah. jump in and drive. Mm -hmm. Yep. Proven car. Mm -hmm. So it had been 383. Mm -hmm. um, so then I rang Andy and I said... No, Andy was... Actually, Andy was <laughs> at Drag Week. I was in America already at Drag Week. Yeah. I just got back from Drag Week. Literally, I reckon I'd walked out of the airport and he knew what flight I was on. <laughs> <laughs> Rung me and said, I really need you to come back over there. It's like, I'm not coming. He's like, oh, I really need you to. I'm like, I've, I've booked yeah. your ticket. <laughs> he booked oh, no. me flights. Literally, if he rung me while I was over there, I would have stayed there. 100%. Like two days later, I got back on a plane and we went back oh, over there. So, and you guys weren't even that close. No, not, not really. really. No. Like, but no. I knew that he'd worked on the car. Sure. I knew that he knew what he was doing and... Yeah, that's that. That was good enough for me. Wow. So. Oh. 
So then you just went yeah. over there and, the, and that's the first time driving it, right? So we went over yep. there, we did some testing. Yeah, we went to a couple of little like regional tracks over there. Yeah. Um, so I think the first pass I did in it, it went a four, 431 at like 188 mile an hour. Yeah, I'm terrible with numbers. So yeah. I'm terrible <laughs> anything. And then we come back around in the next pass that went a 411 yeah. at... 194 or something and yeah. that was that was that's, cool that's that was cracking. at darlington raceway yeah. Yeah. yeah what did that feel like the first time first hit of the trans brake button in a fast fast car the car's built for it so yeah. it didn't feel it didn't really feel that much quicker than my vr like obviously it's quicker like the mm. acceleration the g-force mm-hmm. is a lot more comfortable but though. driving the car i didn't feel any less comfortable than i did in my yeah. vl so um which was good mm. Then we packed up and we drove 12 hours yeah. to Georgia, Georgia and the weather was bad. Um, it wasn't good and it was cold and I think it was cold, wasn't it? So you didn't race yeah. it? Yeah. Oh, we did. So uh, we did and we I think... We pack up and leave those, didn't we? Was that that bad? It got cut short. Yeah, it got cut yeah, short. It was like that. We got two days of testing in. So the first pass at Georgia, I took out the timing cones and caved the front clip in, yeah. which we were able to... Uh, five glass it up and fix it. The second pass, I put it in the wall. Oh. So uh, it just Fuck crossed it up. Out. It went 105 in the 60. It was on a pass and it got out to the, near the 330, yeah. would you say? Yeah, it wasn't bad, but like dragged the wall. Yeah, yes. so kicked out, kicked it the other way. And then I knew it would have spun around if I tried to overcorrect it. And I just sort of went with it and just sort of dragged the wall, which cosmetically... Yeah. It, it was just we a few fixed customers. it and like went back out the next morning. We went yeah, back out so not bad at all. And P Beach, but he was away. two for three, so <laughs> but he was all right on the third one. I was two for two, yeah. and um, yeah, I got told to do a sixty foot pass on the next one, to make yeah. sure everything's right. Yeah, and I P beat. I think it went a four oh seven. So <laughs> oh, right. Yeah, so, long, so you held it was a long sixty, 60 foot. Yeah, I said yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> it was the um, wrong yeah wrong line. Yeah. So yeah, come back around and then the rain came. So that was it. So we didn't actually get to get to race day. Yeah. Um, but yeah, all in all, that's that's how that's we, how you guys met, right? Yeah. Okay, and then so the car then come back to yeah. Australia. Yep, we yep. got the car back. Yeah. Uh, we went to Kenda in Sydney. Yeah, and we had two weeks to prepare the car, so I had to paint the car from the damage. Yep, repair it, get everything right. We went to Sydney. We ended up coming runner up. Yeah, at Kenda. Yeah, uh, the car caught on fire. We come meeting. runner up to Perry Boulevard and. Um, we had an issue. We had a fuel leak. Yep. And um, the car lit up like it blew my windows out. Wow. At, yeah. Um, in yeah. the finals. So in wi- the finals. So, so we, wiring had to be redone. How yep. much damage was there? Yeah. Wiring. Um, wiring, plumbing. My window net was gone. Yep. Door straps. A lot of oh, there was yeah. a lot of burnt stuff. Yeah, I was yep. fine. I got out. I didn't have a mark on me. So yeah. We always wear our gear. I always shut my visor. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. And. Yeah, so yeah. that was good that we come runner up. So we were, we were pretty happy with that first time in Australia. Yeah. Um, we did that, and then um, yeah, we, we we had a good run with that car. Sort of about like spiraled from there, really. And, so. and now COVID you came. have that car, right, Andy? Yes. Yep. So it's, one of the other boys ended up with it. Yep. Um, yes, I was got passed through. So Jared <laughs> had it, then John had it, then Manny had it. Now I've got it sitting there. So yeah, right. Mm. Yeah. John, and, John's and been on to me. I was going to say now, yeah. Joe's... I'll be trying to sell other people's yeah. stuff. Yeah. I said to him on the way here, it's like, you keep on trying to sell my car without discussing it actually with me. It's like the third time I've heard it now. Yeah. Does, like, that, does that mean it's for sale? Is it? Obviously, it feel, he feels that I don't need it, so, right. or it's a bad idea, I think. It's not for sale, but, but. but there's always that but. So yeah. The price that he was telling us didn't seem like he actually wanted it at all. <laughs> I it think he wants me to keep playing with the VL. and yeah. It was almost giving it yeah. away. Yeah. Yeah. It's pretty really much. <laughs> Literally. I was almost giving his stuff I, away. I'm pretty sure I even at one point said, why don't you just give it to us? <laughs> because Thanks, we're John. realistically swapping the value of like two turbos or something. <laughs> yeah. If I didn't have, if I had room in the truck coming up here. <laughs> you would have bought it. I reckon we probably could have squeezed it in there. But um, So yeah, I own it, but I don't know how much longer by the sound of it. <laughs> I tell yeah. you what, it's going to save you a lot of money, though. That's the okay. car, one hundred percent. Yeah, uh, but that's the thing. That's what I said to him at the same time. I feel that's the car that sort of got me heavily involved in racing too. Yeah. So, yeah, I love that car. Before, so when it popped up for sale in America, I sort of 
push Jared to buy it because I love that car. Right. Like it so was, there's sentimental value there. Yeah, so yeah. that's the thing. I do actually <laughs> like that car too. It's, Price yeah. isn't going up. It's yeah, <laughs> so I, I love that car too. I actually we'll I talk really later, like Joe. <laughs> we um, I only got rid of it to yeah. upgrade to a pro mod because we yeah. wanted some longer wheelbase, lighter, that we could be more competitive with. So yeah. that's that's the only reason why I sold yeah. it. But and you take care yeah. of all the the tuning and sort of chassis setup and yeah, tuning, do a lot. maintenance. Yeah wiring plumbing mm. like just really whatever we need to do like yeah and this was all learnt over the years of playing with your own stuff and yeah yep yeah. so the guy i worked for who's a good friend um andrew sanders specialized power porting so i was friends with him for a long time even before i was working for him um he took me under his wing i guess i'd go racing with him um with his car Learn a lot off him there. Then with my Tirana, I remember the first time I built the engine, he handed me an Autronic SM4 to put on it and the wiring harness. I pulled the wiring harness out and like, like they've got like four inputs in the things that about <laughs> two outputs. Um, and I freaked out and gave it back to him and was going to put a carbine nitrous on it. Like. Oh, oh, wow. Yeah. So from there on, yeah, I guess just... Progressed, yeah. yeah. Progressed with it. So you did um, your own wiring and everything. Yeah, so yeah. just sort of, yeah. He was a huge help in that side of yeah, it. Yeah, and shaping you. Yeah, yeah, and still to this day, yeah. like, I'll speak to him daily yeah. sort of thing. And yeah, yeah, good. Yeah, bounce stuff with him and that. And, yeah, it's I guess just someone that sort of guided you through it all. Yeah. So I guess that's how it all came about, really. Yeah. But I'm... Definitely not like a mechanic or anything like that. Yeah, so yeah. Or, yeah. And so when did you leave working for him? Realistically, last year, probably like I was still working for him, but because we were doing so much racing, oh, I think last year we probably raced six months of the 12 months, like literally. So we did so much. Yeah. I felt a bit bad too. So I stepped back and contracted with him a bit. Yeah. Sort of not to mess him around a bit and then just. Things progressed and, um, yeah, I had my own chassis dyno just at my mum and dad's house in their yep. shed. Yep. Just more to play because in Victoria we don't have a track either. So sure. I thought if I bought that, it was an old Dyno Dynamics DOS version thing. Yeah. Mm. Flick so, the switch, load yeah, it up. Yeah. Flick the switch <laughs> and swing the dial. And every time I used it though, every single time I wanted to use it, it would play up. Yeah. So then Johnny and that kept pushing me to try buy another one. Same deal, I was just going to buy another one that I put back in that same shed. So yeah, yeah. Um, got onto a four-wheel drive Dino Dynamics, bought that without realising it was three-phase, Yeah, which is probably the best thing that happened because <laughs> yeah. then push you into the, you to go, me yeah. to then, yeah, go get a factory. And, and and so what year was this? Last year. Just last year? Mm. Yeah, I think, uh, was it this year, John? It was this year. Yeah, this year. So how much does John pay you when you go racing? <laughs> Millions. So <laughs> <Must be. laughs> can't tell by his Rolex. Uh, yeah. I reckon yeah. Yeah. Uh, you can change the screens on those. You, you know, I'm half Maltese. Yeah. 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 I'm full Maltese, yeah. so it's oh perfect. Yeah. So you get it already. You don't have to ask. Um, no, I'm just trying to work out how you'd had six months of the year to race. Ah, uh, it was difficult, really. But yeah, we. Just I feel it when we're got a week. Yeah, oh our, yeah. our sponsors help a lot. That's too. the thing. Yes. So without our sponsors. We can't do what we do. Yeah. That's probably um, when it got stepped up a lot too was we got yeah. a couple of like decent sponsors. One was a major sponsor. Yep. Yep. And yeah, that sort of... But does that pay you... It doesn't really pay you like an income. It really just helps support the actual cost of racing, right? Well, we were lucky enough that we didn't have any blow-ups. Yeah. So yeah. our biggest issue was converters and trans. Just trying to get that, that right. Yep. Um. But we didn't have any real any expensive issues. Yep. So the money we got from sponsorship paid for us to travel to events, paid for our food, paid for our accommodation. accommodation. Yeah, gotcha. Flights. Um, that did help. Flights, too. our running of the car. Oil, so it was a massive help, roads. I guess, realistically. Yeah. Too. So it pretty much covered our whole racing. It probably didn't cover our time that we were away from work. Yeah. But... Yeah, uh, while we were away, everything was covered. Yeah, so which yeah. was good. And then and I guess when you're back, this year, yeah, you had to do twice the amount of work in your downtimes too, yeah. as well as try to get the cars ready and 
Yeah, yeah. so that's a thing too. That's yeah. what a lot of people don't see. You know, we'll be at work from, you know, eight in the morning till 10 o'clock at night. You 100%. know, like yeah. doing yeah. your work stuff and then trying to do your race car stuff after hours or, Saturday, or between days. stuff during the day. It was just, it was so hard. Yeah, you know, and I, often you're competing with guys that are doing this full time. Um, yeah, and yeah. guys with a lot bigger budgets. Yeah. Massive so budgets. We, yeah. we, we don't have massive budgets. Um, we honestly, what you, what you see is what you get. Like we just sort of scrape by. We were, I was lucky enough to, like I said, with the Lambo and that, to make some lucky choices with stuff that financially was able to help us a lot. Beneficial, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. and then also, also we built the Pro Mod car through COVID as well. So like Melbourne had the strictest lockdowns in yeah. the world and... Yeah, we'd literally go lock the front gate, lock the <laughs> shop, and so we built that cover up all the windows. Yeah, like, yeah. yeah. and yeah. we'd be working we'd on the car. Built the car through COVID, like literally. Yeah. So yeah. I guess we had that sort of downtime Definitely. to at least get the car built too. So yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. That was probably a big benefit. And who are the major sponsors, or who are the sponsors that help out? Um, so Joel's Garage Gear. Yeah. So they sell hoist, um, workshop equipment. I think we've bought stuff from them. Oh, uh, yeah, we just got a uh, spring compressor today. Oh, oh really? Yeah. 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 So uh, they're, they're awesome. They this, Their products are awesome. The guys are awesome. Like, yeah, we love them. So without them, we'd, we'd be stuffed. Um, yeah. They're, yeah, they've been with us from the start, really. Yeah. So they've been really good. We had um, Icon Services Australia. Yeah. Um, they were, uh, they're a cleaning company. Yep. So they clean Crown Casinos, Melbourne, Sydney, airports, yep. footy grounds. Yeah, yeah, they've got some big contracts. Some major, yeah, major cleaning company. Yeah. yeah. So, um, they, yeah, they, they've been really good to us as well. Um, Cheetah Race Fuels, they, that's all we use. We use Cheetah Methanol in our Pro Mod. We use Cheetah E85 in our street cars. It's, um, we've, we've tested it so much and... Yeah, like we run in a four and a half thousand horsepower car, yeah. and we don't put any additives, anything in it, and it's perfect for us. Yeah. So, um, yeah, Cheetah's good. GJ Drive Lines, they um, cover us for whatever tail shafts we need for our race cars and that. So, yeah, they're yeah, awesome. We've got their carbon shaft in our Pro Mod, and yeah, yeah, it's been faultless. So that's all been good, and the list goes on. Like we. We've got even just a good bunch of crew too that will turn up, yeah, on the weekends, put in help, like, yeah. We're just mates, yeah. you know, yeah. like we, yeah. we, we are a bunch of mates out. more we, than, yeah. We pay out on each other. Um, yeah. It's yeah, I think the major part of the racing is the social aspect of it. Yeah. Like, yeah, I mean, is, there's yeah. only a very short time, yeah, on the track, right? You're on <laughs> the, the rest road of and you're, yeah, that's yeah. the thing. You spend a lot of time together too, so. Yeah. You don't want it to be too look at the racetrack we're 100 percent serious like yeah 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 but you still want to have fun joke around and mm. yeah it, it's a good atmosphere yeah. so i came out yeah. to watch is at um street outlaws that was yes. the first time at the track yep. for a while uh, and first time sort of to experience what you guys do and um yeah it was great to see everybody just come together and do everyone knew their job everyone knew what was going on um there was nobody sort of standing around watching anybody everybody was doing something yes. if they weren't they'd find something to do yep. they were cleaning the windows cleaning whatever like yeah yep. we, we don't have much time to turn the cars yeah. around like especially at street outlaws yep. um so yeah you got to be on it you got to make sure you don't miss anything yeah the smallest little thing you know could cost you mm -hmm. uh, tens of thousands of dollars in yep. blow yeah. ups or if you crash or anything like that oh 100 so, percent. and that's why everyone's got their job and 100%. they take yep. they take ownership at of the it. same time it was fun too though it was fun. Even from an outsider yeah. and whatever, like yeah, yeah. I was, I felt welcomed and, yeah. and it was yeah, a, f a community thing. It was great. Yeah, like going rounds and that, like it's awesome. It's exciting. Yeah, that experience, yeah. So, that, that feeling on the start line, watching the car yeah. leave and then it's it, when you won, um, yeah, going going up up um, through the passes. It was yeah, great. It was, yeah. No, it was cool. So. Did you did you actually win there? I thought no, maybe I didn't uh, win, win each round. Yeah. round. Yeah. Go, so go we went rounds. to the final up against good friends of ours. Yeah. Um, Craig Burns, the Burns family, yep. um, SCF race cars. Yep. So we do a lot with them. They they do a lot of our chassis work on the cars. If we need any chassis stuff done, they, yep. they do it. They help us out. They give us advice with yep. um, oh, Craig's awesome suspension like and, yeah. and all that. Right. So, yeah, they're awesome. They're the best. Yep. Um, yeah. And so we come up against Craig in the, final in the finals. 
and it was a good race, but yeah, he uh, he donkey stomped us, and yeah. um, <laughs> as he as he calls it, and he doesn't let it down either. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So um, yeah, he he deserved it. They had yeah. the the they probably got the baddest steel steel car in the country. Yeah, I think I'd so, say. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and um, yeah, I was wrapped just to run alongside with them. Like these are guys that I grew up watching racing, and yeah, without even realizing you're going to end up yeah. one day doing the same yeah. stuff. racing alongside yeah. them. So That's the thing that people you turn into good friends, like yeah. class as good yeah. friends, like people that you yeah looked yeah. up to. Yep. So uh, that event, you actually raced a green car. Is that right? Did you have a green car? Then? <laughs> yeah, we, we need it up. We yeah. have to bring it up oh. because we we cop it. Because if you don't, everyone else will anyway. We have been copying it. Right? <laughs> I've been copying it too. So been... I'm, I'm not looking forward to seeing it come oh, out. Really? So anyway, yeah. farm truck and Asian come over and we're smack talking, so to speak. And I said, I'll race yours, no problems. Yeah. Um, so you've won't... got the race car there, but then you've got the, there's the street car, the Lambo, the twin turbo. So I at this point, I'd never even driven it. Right. So I think, did you... Uh, Ashraf brought it out. I think. Ashraf dropped it off yeah. to the so track. This is before you'd done the trade in for the grey one. This is just yeah, as we traded. Right. So I, the car was still living in Sydney then. Anyway. Yeah, I still hadn't even picked the car. I'd never sat in the seat. Yep. And um, yeah, so we, we negotiated. We come up with our right, heads up run with them for a thousand bucks. Yep. And went to the start line. I HRA were losing it. So, um, and, and that's because. Because of my record with the grey car, right. as soon as they see me in the grey so car. theory on the green car didn't work. Yeah. yeah, so. <laughs> no, yeah the like, colour didn't do anything. No, yeah, the you are not. Off, shut the know. car off. You're not going out. And I'm like, I had my helmet on, everything on. I'm like, look, they're going out. They're just, no, nah, shut it off. So they made us both shut the cars off. I had to get out the car, sign extra paperwork. Mm. Um, they said you were to go to the eighth mile and that's it. And I said, yeah, that's fine. I said, I'm not going to exceed whatever <laughs> time. Like, I'm allowed Isn't to go. that all it was though? One eight race? It was, yeah. it was eighth mile. Yeah. So yeah. I said, I'm not going to exceed my 9.0, 165. I'm going to be well under that. So yeah. just let me go. Yeah. And they, they were really good about it. And they, let, they let me race. Yeah. Now, the problem is I'd never been in the car. I'd never – that was the first time I'd started the car or sat in it. Yeah. I tried to do the launch control before I went through the tunnel. So farm truck's already out there. He's already done his burnout. He was trying to get into the beams quick because he knows – he thinks turbo cars lag, he'll get the jump. Yeah. So I, I know what he's he was trying, trying to, to do. Smart. Yeah. Yeah. So I tried to two step it and it wasn't working. And I'm like, what's going on? And I'm waving to Joe. Yeah, I'm, I'm like, like, man, this isn't working. He's like, switch it off, switch it on, switch it off, switch it I'm on, try it it's again. In fault or something because I'm like, I know he knows how to drive. He just drove the gray one. Like, yeah, surely. I just a... done the whole drag yeah. challenge with the gray one. So anyway, um, I just said, you know what, I'm just going to have to go out. I won't be able to use the launch control and just yeah. drive off the line. Yeah, which is ridiculous. Yeah, yeah. so yeah. I didn't want to not go out. Yeah, sure. So I went out. I tried to launch it. It wouldn't go into launch control. I let go of the button, uh, the brake, yeah. and then it sort of just bogged a little bit. And then yeah. by the time it picked up a little bit and got He's going, yeah. I was, was reeling him in like, he, like quite easily. Wow. But it was all over because it's only eighth mile. Yeah. If it was quarter mile, I would have got him. You would him. have got him, yeah. But... Um, yeah, anyway, I we didn't know why launch control wasn't working. Yeah. So after that, we copped it. We copped it. Copped yeah. it. Shit box. Is oh, so you good. built like, a shit oh, card. Lost to that. Control. Junk <laughs> car. Yeah. Things falling apart. Rubbish. rubbish all the rest of it. I, yeah. I've copped it. Yeah. 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 I've copped a pro racer. <laughs> pro racer. <laughs> loses to farm, farm truck. truck. Uh, yeah. A I'm, barn find. Yep. Uh, yeah. All of it. I've, I, I copped it all. Yeah. yeah. And then we found out. And then we found out. So <laughs> we went to Kudamundra. <laughs> so which is what? A couple of months? A month after? Oh, yeah, months about after. that. Yeah, it was a bit At after. this point, I still hadn't driven the car. I yeah. took it home. And did I no. take it? No, no, I didn't no, even take didn't. it home. We I left it here. Yeah, we yeah. Yeah. got it from here. So I come up here, picked it up. We went to Kudamundra. I still hadn't driven the car. So I went out to do my first run. Launch control's not working. I'm like, oh, I've just about had enough of this thing. Yeah. Drove back around, Joe. Hey, but or, or. Don't forget though, in between that, we're testing it and it's working. Yeah. So we're like, there's nothing wrong with it. We haven't found anything wrong. Yet. And we're getting told by everyone else, you need to sort it out, make sure it doesn't happen again, like make sure. And we're like, this is a factory function. We don't have any control over it. 
So, <coughs> so anyway, if it's in yeah. fault or something, so if all drive goes into fault or if there's an ABS fault or something like that, or if, the, won't or if the front lift goes into fault, so we're like, like, so, you know, but none of that was apparent. So there was no fault because so, yes. none, uh, at no point was I like, he's not pressing the brake hard enough. No point. I'm thinking that. Of course not. No. So. Anyway, yeah, so you jump in the car. So I jump in the car and you guys were busy with the other boys um, doing bits and pieces. Yeah. So I'm trying stuff. I'm pressing buttons. I'm trying stuff. It's still not working. It's still not working. So I had my foot on the brake. I said, I really pushed on the brake. Like I pushed harder on the brake and I felt like a, a little switch. And then I pressed the throttle and it worked. I'm like, oh, no. <laughs> And I said, I, I think I come up to both years. I'm like, I know I why. I, found I know what's not working. I know why I lost to the farm <laughs> truck. I wasn't pushing the brake pedal hard enough. Yeah. So compared to the grey car, you need to push. I it didn't hard. have to push yeah. it that hard, but with the green car, I don't know if it hasn't been used as much. Maybe nah, it's got it's probably, lower case. It must be just that Perfumante, that model. Yeah, um, but like you really need a feel. Yeah. yeah, push on the brake pedal. Once I did that, it was fine. Yeah. But you know, it did it one other time. Did it, and it was when I was about to race Chris in the other green hurricane. Yeah. yeah, we both got both lights up. I had my foot on the brake. I hit the accelerator, and the launch control didn't work. But lucky with those full trees, which I absolutely yeah. hate. Yeah. Yes. you've got enough time yeah. that I pressed it again, hit it, and I was able to take off. Wow. So it's it, just it does happen. So that happened to me in the finals against Amy, which is why I've been copying it. Oh, so is that what happened? Yeah. yeah. Um, so it, it can happen and, and it's normally user error it's I was going like to say can you sense most, anything here most of the error? time it's user error yeah. yeah have you got anything you want to confess as well <laughs> I, I, I can drive man <laughs> <laughs> I have never I can't, had that's it. why I just don't drive yeah. anymore <laughs> no <laughs> I can't uh, I've never had so these issues so I'm going to put my hand up confession I'm going to say it's my fault sorry to Precision <laughs> Racing for making you look like idiots <laughs> yeah. sorry to TV. in front of the world my oh. crew and anyone else um, but yeah it's my fault I stuffed mm. up and I didn't press the brake pedal hard enough but you ended up making up for it at CUDA right CUDA we had some good results yeah yeah I, I spun out which yeah. was pretty funny <laughs> yeah yeah. Um, but yeah we were lucky enough because there was some tough competition like yeah. it really could have gone between, oh, you know, a few cars. There was like cars. four or five cars. Yeah. I mean, luckily for us, they're all from our group, yeah. right? So it's like we don't really care who wins now. <laughs> yeah. um, they were pretty much all within, what, one-tenth? Yeah. Close to yeah. it. Yeah, so I think Maximum overall, two -tenth. it was like a, a point between, yeah. you know, three cars or something. Yeah. And, um, yeah, so we were lucky enough to win the Ultimate Street Car, the Turbo yeah. Smart Ultimate yeah. Street Car. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I was wrapped. Like I'd yeah. never done any sort of cornering or anything before. It showed. And <laughs> yeah, it showed. And the thing was, that was, I think the thing that got me that extra point yeah. was that spin out because I knew I was out of shape and I yeah. knew I had to get off it. But I knew if I got off it, it's I wasn't going to get to the finish line <laughs> quick enough. So I just mashed it and I knew it was going to spin around and that was it. It was gone. But I, I think I passed the finish line, done a 360. Landed on the grass, um, and then I, but I, that could, was like I heard you put your foot down as well, like halfway through the spin. Had to, yeah, yeah. to straighten it back up. Had to be done, yeah, yeah. Yep. So it was halfway through the spin. I got on it again, just to sort of, yeah, yeah get it to hook up a bit. <laughs> Unbelievable. Um, yeah. So we did that, and we we ran the quickest yeah, ET the for a street car yeah. ever, which was which was at eight forty five at one hundred eighty mile an hour. Yeah. And then we backed it up the next day with an 8.46 at 180 mile an hour. And that's an unprepped track yeah. with a street radial tyre. Yeah, so the car actually hooks up better on the street. So I've driven it back in Melbourne after Cooter. Yep. And it actually hooks up better on the street than it did at Cooter. Than it did at Cooter, yep. wow. Yep. Wow. Um, yeah, so I did that and yeah, it was awesome. So What, what do you think, um, the Perth versus the, the grey car? It's not as comfortable. Yep. Just dropping into it. You know, like it's got the hard edges and yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But all in all, the car is far more superior. Like yeah. just Sick the car. finish of it, the just everything about it. I love it. Like yeah. it's yeah, no, well awesome. worth the extra. Um, yeah, for the for the perf, that's for sure. So. Yeah, awesome. So I think we've got some questions here, haven't we? Yeah, there's a couple uh, couple of questions came through from uh, oh, here our we go. post today. So <laughs> this should be interesting. This will be good. <laughs> okay, anonymous. 
They're always Please good. Please ask John tonight who his favourite pit crew is <laughs> and about this his new stitcher. love for puppies. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I feel like there's more behind this. My favourite pit crew, I'm going to say is myself. Because right. I do just as much as most the guys <laughs> working on the car. I um, yeah. So I'm going to say myself. That's a not, bit of a, a definitely bit. not the bloke with the mustache. <laughs> right. So I'm tipping that's where that question's come from. And uh, I don't even know. It's an honor. It's been. Yeah. You know what? I can see through the texter, but they've genuinely scrubbed this out. So yeah, I can't. yeah. So I'm, I yeah, I can pretty much guarantee it's him, and he's probably. My least favourite crew. <laughs> <laughs> Have we got a first he's, name? He's probably he's probably the best at drinking beer at the end. Yeah, he's good. Yeah, at that. Yeah, at he, that. And just <laughs> telling stories. Yeah, yeah and twirling <laughs> his mo. So, yeah. nah, look, he, he brings me into stage at the start line. Sometimes he gives me a little twirl on his mo no. before I, I do the run. Like twirl of good luck, though. So, yeah, yeah it makes yeah, it better. Yeah. And he's always looking for the cameras to see if they're looking at him when he's, when he's <laughs> lining right. up. But yeah. yeah. It doesn't start with A, does it? It does definitely start with A. And yeah. it's not Andrew. No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm so, not even yeah. sure if I'm supposed to say it. Cause it's and the dog, the don't even get me started on the dog. So my missus decided, I've been putting it off for about 17 years with Ben's brother. <laughs> and she has been hounding me for a puppy she's for years. She's got patience. And she's definitely got patience, yeah. Yeah, yeah she's a good woman. Yeah. And um, yeah, she wanted this dog and this dog is absolutely killing me. It's killing all of us. <laughs> I think she's regretting getting it too yeah. now. But anyway, yeah, let's move on from move, the dog. What, what dog is it? Oh, I don't even know. You do, do you? What is it? Oh, I, um, <laughs> my poodle looking thing. <laughs> That's why he's saying it's, like a, lab, it's a lab, poodle. Labradoodle oh, something. Labradoodle. No, it's a, oh, something like that. Aussie yeah. cobber dog. Oh, Australian a, cobber dog, which is like a Labradoodle or something. Like yeah, poodle, right. doodle, no, I don't, I don't know. know what it is. Yeah. All right. Um, so. I, I'm, assume, I'm assuming it's the same person. And is it true oh. <laughs> he wanted to put his mate's car in his pool at his <laughs> wife's birthday party? <laughs> Mate, this a good mate of ours. We, we were at um, his wife's birthday, yeah. and we'd had a few drinks. Like we'd, we'd tipped a few <laughs> in, and his VL's been sitting there unfinished for about fifteen years. It's a bare shell. Yeah. So at, there was one point of the night, I was trying to work out how we could get the side of the shed off so we could put it in. Because one of our mates, Timmy, he had a captain's hat on too. So we we're going to get in the pool <laughs> oh, and get him on the roof. Sailor. Oh my god! And uh, he could be the captain, oh. and we were going to sit in the car, but. Um, yeah, I think it's know. probably yeah. better that didn't happen. It yeah. didn't happen. No. Yeah. no. <laughs> All right. We've got another one uh, from Dougie. Has John ever been told he looks like Dominic Toretto from the Fast and <laughs> Furious? <laughs> this is a stitch up, I'll tell you. <laughs> <laughs> Dougie, don't make me start with you. All right. <laughs> All right, I've got a... There's actually some really good questions there. Yeah, okay. All right. So would you guys be up for true no prep racing, not the TV stuff? Not the TV. On a racetrack. On a racetrack, definitely. Yeah. Yep. So. What about um, airstrip? So like Cuda, Cuda style? It depends what car. Like we wouldn't go and roll a door slammer. No out, way. Like of course, a, yeah. a pro mod or something like a VL or Even something? steel roof a quarter or something. But yeah, something like that. Yeah, definitely. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. If it was at like yeah. Sydney Raceway or an actual track that was like not prep though, like not even like the TV series, not prep, but like no prep, but on a. But at the airstrip. Good, yeah, yeah. That, that that'd be that'd be fun too. Just yeah, as long as it's not anywhere you can hit something and mm. yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, dual clutch transmission or turbo four hundred? <laughs> that's a pretty. I guess that's sort easy. of car sensitive, right? You're not going to put a turbo four hundred in the Lambo. Would be cool. <laughs> Wouldn't have that launch control. Would problem. be fast. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so. yeah, I don't know. Um, four hundreds. We, we've done a lot with four hundreds. We haven't. Done a lot with the dual clutch, dual clutch stuff, but you know the Lambos are or well, the green Lambos been yeah. awesome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I guess it depends what sort of car. Yeah. Uh, John, John should Joe buy a Fox body or Audi R8? Aaron put this question in. I reckon. <laughs> <laughs> not even. <laughs> no, he's no, set on R8. Yeah, yeah he's. <laughs> 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 it's it's it really is a tough one. It's personal preference, really. And you'd say both. I know what you're like. I've got both pretty yeah. much. Like I don't have a Fox body, yeah. but I've got something along those yeah. lines. And then I've got the Hurricane, which is yeah. along you know, yeah, the V10 exactly. line. So just buy both. Just do both. Yeah. This has been one of the hardest decisions I've ever had to make. It's um, Joe yeah. knows. 
I know what I should do, but I know what I want to do. Correct. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Andy, no, what no. are some tuning differences between radial and big tyre? Really, the no prep. So I haven't done a lot of big tyre stuff, and then that no prep deal was our first um, real goal big tyre. Um, I guess just a whole different... Well, it was a big change too because our radial stuff was um, ter- erboed. And yep. then when we went to big tyre, it was a blower as well. Wow. So, so that's, you can't even work. compare it. No, that's, that's the hard part. But yeah. like dramatically different. And honestly, prior to doing the big tyre stuff, I hated it. Like as in as a spectator, I was all for radial. Yeah. The big tyre thing was great fun. It's a complete different train of thought. Like yeah. on chassis, on everything was different power management. But to compare one to the other, we haven't sort of run the same combination on both chassis setups sort of thing. Yeah, but yeah. so you uh, can't really compare the two. Either way, that's challenging. Yeah. Like I was going to say, it's, it's, not it's a completely cutter. different challenge. Definitely. And yeah, like I guess everything's different. The way you got to apply power, the falling, the shocks, yeah, like shock, is, yeah. everything, yeah. So Completely different setup. It's sort of hard not doing a turbo car in both ways and yeah. doing a blower car on a radial as well. So, which that big tyre car that we ran on the the blower car, that was originally a radial car prior to John getting it, but we just never ran it on a radial with yeah. the blower. So, Yeah, cool. <laughs> We've never really done much of it. So, we're, even myself, I've got no idea on chassis stuff. It's, it's not my area. And that's the same thing too. That's where Burns, he's been such a big help yeah. to us. Like, yeah. Like, we might have our ideas, you'll ring Craig and he'll just say no nope. or <laughs> yes. So, yeah, without Craig and his the rest input. of them. It, it's yeah. great to have access to somebody like that, especially Craig. And definitely. he's such a genuine guy. He's, 100%. He's like, always happy to chat. That's the thing. Yep. Yeah, awesome. Uh, what's involved in running a season of racing? I guess touching on mm. the fact that sponsorships are involved and... Yeah, but it's more just time, like just a lot of time. Yeah. Just... You know, like people see when you're at the track and how hectic it is between rounds, just turning the car around. But then you get home and you've got to do all the maintenance. You know, like yeah. it's all the rest of the stuff that goes with it. It's plus run a business, plus plus you've got family, kids, wife, family juggling everything. It's it's really hard. So how do the family deal with it? They're really understanding. So. Um, Sounds yeah. like a nice way to put it. Yeah. 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 I'd is she? Are they interested or? Is she though? <laughs> is she though? Nah, she's she's actually really good. And yeah. so I've got two girls, daughters. One's uh, 13 and 8. And um, yeah, they're really good too. They know I love racing and yeah. that side of it. So when I'm home, I spend as much time home as I can. So, you know, I, I always spend Sundays at home. Unless we're away racing, I'll yeah. always be at home Sunday yeah. and do the family stuff. Um most nights I go straight home after work, so I spend time with them. I see them in the morning, yep, before they go to go to school. school so, um, yeah, so you do, but yeah, it's just a time thing, you know, like it's just so much. Like last year, I think we raced for six months solid, it's basically and then, another full time job. Like, mm. realistically, that people don't see, like, yeah. yeah, it's a lot. And uh, I reckon we probably done. I want to say it, but I, I, don't, I don't think there'd be anyone in Australia that done more racing than us last year. So, would that be fair in saying? Yeah, on par anyway. Like, yeah, yeah. we well, had six months off to do it. I, over Traveling. over the twelve months, it would have. I honestly reckon it would have been crazy. Like, so I reckon it would have been week on week off nearly for, and between that, yeah, maintenance and yeah. And the thing with us is, we can't test in Victoria with our radial car, yeah. so. Uh, we drive from Melbourne to Sydney. Yep, and which is a good 10 hours in yeah, the truck. So we might make yeah. a few changes during the week and then we'll have to drive 10 hours up to Sydney to test. That's and then unbelievable. spend one day in testing, pack up and then drive home the next morning. Like yeah, it's and just, then back to work on Monday. Yeah. It's just crazy. And then back to work and then, all right, we need to do these changes, transmission back out, converter out. Let's do this. Let's do that. Or, um, yeah. Yeah, just whatever. Like it just never ends. So. Is is the series growing, or or is that the radial or or the um, pro mod style racing growing, or not really? 
I think so. I think yeah. there's yeah. there's some good cars in the country now. That's for sure. Big dollar yeah. cars and it's a lot more getting built as well. And yeah, there's do more you think coming. That'll mean that there'll be more more events and more potential money up for grabs and and, and things like that. Or definitely, yeah. yeah. I think yeah. that the I think I think we're lacking prize money pool. One hundred percent. Yeah. Yep. I think. Um, I mean, re- even if it's small amounts, it's it's not going to cover what it costs. No, nah, but nah. but it's something, yeah. Yeah, so yeah, I think um, prize money at events. I, I know it's hard because guys don't make a lot of money, promoters and all that as well. But I don't know if somehow you know. Well, it, I think we if need to every entrant was to pay a little bit extra, you know, yeah, everyone would be in. complain as it is are they? with entrant, really? entrant prices and that. So even if there's prize money though, yeah, I think maybe some of the bigger classes um, getting the guys with the big cars to do a, a bigger buy in. Buy yeah. in. Yeah. yeah, so like say your, your entry of say 250 and then say a $500, $500 buy-in. Buy yep. Yep, just to try and get the money up a bit more. Yeah, um, yeah. Overseas, obviously, they've got massive sponsors. And yeah, overseas is massive. They sell joints yeah. out, so it's not an issue. But like, you know, they put up 50,000 US, 100,000 US for some events. It's yeah, it's massive. And I think the, the most money we've ever won in Australia was five grand. Yeah, we won that five at that one meeting. Yeah, and so I won a Kender yeah. event at uh, Queensland. Yeah, so Andy, uh, back to automation. What's the uh, – um, so you've opened up a month ago. Uh, where's the shop located? How, what size is it? What are you, what are you doing there? Like what's the, what's the goal? Um, so it's in Durham, so Melbourne as well, probably 10, 15 minutes from – Centre of Melbourne, yep. realistically. Yeah, I think everywhere seems to be sort of that. Right? It is, realistically. So, yeah. Um, yeah, that wiring, like plumbing, race car setup. Yep. Um, and you got the Dynodynamics all drive. Dynodynamics all drive. Chassis so, yep. Chassis, so also like your diesel, four-wheel drive, stuff like that. Yep. Um, then sort of not so much factory ECU stuff or anything like that, just... Um, Aftermarket ECU. Tuning. Tuning. Um, yeah, then wiring. Yeah, yep. that side. And is it U plus one just, or just at me the moment? At the just moment. Yep. So yep. you got yeah. one hoist, two hoist? One hoist. Um, yeah, so at the moment, one hoist. There's a four post there if yep. I end up putting it in. But yeah, just trying to set everything up and make yep. everything happen. And it's a huge task setting up a shop, eh? Hey? 100%. I would have never thought. Yeah. Like, By the time you do your second one, it's going to be cracker. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> so hopefully that's a little bit away. Yeah. So, oh, you, no, you know what? Hopefully yeah. it's not. Well, hopefully that's it, true too. Yeah. Yes. And you'll so. be surprised because I know when we moved here, we're like, I, I came from like 215 squares, yep. right? And this place is like 880. Yes. And I was like, this yeah. is going to be way too much. Yep. Uh, and I think we were like nine months in. Yep. And running out of space. And um, I think it only took what two, three, two years, three years yeah, right before yeah. we we're in the next door, yep. next door, and cutting holes in the wall. And yeah. Yeah. that's Pri- the thing. prior to that, we were already storing cars. We're knocking on Bob's door, being like, "Hey, can we leave some cars?" Oh yeah, yeah. we, we had yeah. to rent it yeah. out, yeah. and yeah, yeah. Like, oh, that's the thing. Look, everyone's been good and pushing along and supportive, and yeah, mates. Oh, everyone wants you to everyone do it. Everyone wants 100%. you. Like even like Joe will message me to see how everything's going. Stuff yeah. like. like it is good and that's, yeah. I guess, the good part about the community. The industry, like yeah. The car yeah. industry. So everyone wants to see everyone succeed and, yep. yeah, that yeah, part 100%. is, like, very good. So, yeah, yeah. Yep. Yeah, good. And so I guess things probably change as well as you get a little bit bigger and more settled in. Yep. You probably end up taking on more work and stuff yes. like that. But right yep. now you're just enough to keep you going while setting up. That's I think thing. you've already got stuff there that you're trying to finish off. Well, that's the thing I've got. Yeah, <laughs> a few cars I've got to get finished off. Yep. Um, we're trying to get a car finished for Drag Challenge this year. Yep. Um, yeah, I've got a bit of stuff to do realistically. Yep. Um, and it's all through word of mouth at the moment? Yes. Yeah. Yep. I yeah. haven't done any advertising. I made a Facebook page and I've put two posts on it, yeah. but I will start trying to run that a lot more. Yeah, yeah as you get time. Yeah, as I get time and... Now that everything's starting to fall into yeah. place, like the shop's nearly set up now as such. So yeah, yeah good. I can start to try to focus more time onto that as well. Yep. And do you have family? I've got a missus, yep. but no children. No children, so, yeah. Yep. Yep. So Is it going to happen? Yeah, one day. So yeah, I guess that does at least free up. Sometimes she's good 100%. as well. So yeah. it's the same deal. I can 
be at the shop at 11.30 at night, still trying to sort stuff okay. and, yeah, but... And she's understanding. Yeah. Yeah, good. And uh, so you guys are close to RPM, Race Parts Melbourne? Yeah, probably 10 minutes oh, down perfect. the road. So that makes it good too if I yeah. need parts. Yeah. I'll yeah, duck unbelievable. I'll grab it. So yeah. that was a bit of the thing too from the start, trying to find somewhere. Somewhat close. Close. Like John said when he was building his car, you need parts and... If you get stuck in traffic in Melbourne, it's terrible. Yeah. So I know it's bad here it's too. It's like Sydney on yeah, a good day. Yeah, I was going to say yeah. like Sydney <laughs> on a good day. So, yeah. Uh, so at least it's straight down one road, 10 minutes on there. Yeah, that's so, awesome. Yeah. yeah. And um, so, John, with um, RPM, uh, what is it that you guys sort of specialise in? What do you stock? What, what What's the day-to-day uh, sales of the shop? Like We do a lot of aeroflow, so fittings, hose, all that sort of stuff. Yep. Uh, we also do a lot of race works. Um, we got like Volvo pumps, injectors, Bosch injectors, semen injectors. Um, Garrett turbos, you know, Plasma Man. I think we're one of the biggest dealers for Plasma Man in Victoria. Yep. Um, How does that work? You buy stock based on what you know people want because I know that, I mean, most things you have to order and wait for eight weeks. Yeah. Are they doing that through you guys or it's because you got it on the shelf? Or people have to wait, yeah. yeah. They just order yeah. it through us. Yeah, good. Yeah, yeah. When, when it comes in, it comes in, yeah. So yeah. most people are, you know, book it in advance so they know I how think long it takes, I think. Since COVID, everyone's become accustomed to, to having to wait for stuff. Exactly. So I think people it's sort good. of yeah. think ahead now and order stuff earlier, mm-hmm. so... Yeah. Yeah, we do a lot of that. We do a lot of Garrett. So um, I don't think I mentioned it before, but we're sponsored by Garrett as well yep. for our Pro Mod. Yep. Uh, they're awesome. Turbo Smart as well. They yep. sponsor us. So um, yeah. Yep. So um, you obviously sell Turbo Smart. We sell Turbo Smart. Um, Tires. Yeah, we sell GFB as well. So we do yep. do quite a bit of GFB stuff. Uh, tires. Yeah, we got the PSR tires. So yep. we've got a lot of stock of um, PSRs, so the 235s, 255s, 275s. Um, yeah, and then all your just general speed shop stuff. So we, we do a lot with Rocket. So yep. um, we've got orders from them coming every day. So, you know, we yeah, have Edelbrock, wow. Holly. Um, you stock nitrous on. gear? Nitrous gear as well? You stock it or not? Not a lot of nitrous. I, uh, yeah, we, we just order more sure. that sort of stuff in as needed. Usually yep. we get stuff. Within a day, yeah, you know, yeah, we order it the day before. The yeah. next day, we've got deliveries. So, yeah. Um, yeah, I think that's that's where we do PRP stuff and yeah. um, Haltech as well. So, yeah. yeah, yeah, good. So you get like a broad customer range that come in. Uh, what about the we fuel? Do. do you sell the fuel there as well? Cheetah fuel, yeah. So yeah. we always keep cheetah fuel. So you got in drums. Stock. We've got drums. Stock. Yeah, we do Perfect. oils. Yeah. We got Lucas oils, high tech oil. Um, yeah, yeah. What all that? that so sort of pretty stuff. much, if someone's building a car, it should be a one-stop shop. Pretty much. Pretty much. Yeah, yeah. We can cover most stuff unless it's not available yeah. locally. Then it becomes hard. Yeah. And but when it comes to hoses and fittings, I reckon that's probably the biggest thing where yeah. there's just such a big range, right? We've got a huge range of yeah. hoses and fittings. Like I reckon we've you're going to get them out of trouble. Yeah, we've got a wall that's probably. Oh, 20 meters long yeah full like it's not often someone comes into the shop and we don't have a fitting they need an adapter or yeah you know all the odd sort of fittings um yeah. but again there is times where some people come because there's so many variants yeah you, um yeah but usually the next day we have it so yeah 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 good and what's the so what's the what's the short-term plan for for rpm in that case or is it like just keep running it as it is and as new things come in? I think so, yeah. Just yeah. keep cruising along. Um, yeah, doing what we're doing. Yeah. Seems to be heading in the right direction. Yeah, so yeah. We've been going for seven years now and yeah. it's. And I think if you if, if a shop like that can get through COVID, you would have seen a bit of a, a decrease in turnover or people just buying from home. We were crazy through COVID. Wow. So we were probably doing double the amount we we're doing oh, pre-COVID. Shit. Yeah. So it was a pain. We had to put a bench out the front, have the gate shut, contactless pickup. It was hard. Like yeah. it was hard on our workers as well. Yeah. And yeah. That, but yeah, we got through it and um, yeah, made made it all work and got out the other end of it. So that was that was good. So, yeah, awesome. Yeah, I think if you can get through that and all the hurdles after mm. seven years, 
It's a good sign. Mm. Yeah. So yeah. we're just cruising along. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. It's good that they're passionate about it as well. Obviously, with the racing background, you yeah. know your stuff. There's not much that you're not going to know or be able to help. If somebody has a question, as in they need fittings or they need a, yep. they're doing this. That's the thing, and we've done so many different combos over the years. Like I'll build, I enjoy the whole part of building a car, and then once I've got it finished, I might race it once or twice. I'm I'm happy to sell it, and move it on. So we've learnt a lot over the years with different combos, whether it's LSs. Barras, you know, RBs, Hemis, whatever it is. And I will help anyone that asks me. Yeah, like even yeah. if they don't shop with us, like I will help. Like people message me all the time. Oh, you know, I'm having this issue. What do you think it is? And I'll yeah. help them, you know. Oh, you've got no reason not to. Yeah, and yeah. that's the thing. So like we've got the knowledge. So we just really try and yeah. do, do our best to help. And we support a lot of local events and that as well. Like we, we sponsor Kendar. Yeah. We sponsor Holden Nationals, Ford Nationals. We sponsor Heathcote. Heathcote Park Raceway, call the Park Raceway. Yeah. So we're always trying to do our little bit to give back as well. To the community. Yeah, yeah. to help. So um, you do like car yeah. shows and stuff at the workshop as well, or cars and coffee style. Of... I always dreaded doing it, to be <laughs> honest. Yeah. And I was always stressed because, you know, you see car shows, people start doing burnouts and it gets out of hand. And I it gave me anxiety thinking yeah. about it. <laughs> yeah. And the boys. Um, at the shop yeah. and uh, Pro Street Media, they were talking between the, <laughs> them and said, all right, we're doing a show on this day. I'm like, oh, all right. And yeah. then the week before, I'm like, no, nah, cancel the show. No, nah, <laughs> we're not doing it. And I'm like, no. Nah. And they're like, and then the next day I'm like, all right, all right, we'll do it. And I think I cancelled it three times <laughs> that week. Well, how, did, how did they convince you to change your mind? Oh, it'll be all right. You know, you just come and open up and then you can leave, you know, like, because I, I get really anxious. Like, I, I, I'm i really respectful. Like, I, I'm not going to do a burnout in your driveway or yeah. out in the street. But there is a lot of people that will do that. And oh, you see it on the news and you see all that. And I, I just get really nervous. And I didn't want our image, image our, yeah. our um, business associated with being yeah. hoons and being like that. Yeah. And especially when you got big name sponsors, yeah, 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 exactly. So you know, we we want to do the right thing. We want to set a a good image for for that as well. So, um, anyway, come the show day, I rolled up, moved the cars out, put the pro mod out, put the Firebird out. Um, our VLs were all there, so we rolled the VLs out, and then the cars started rolling in. So, we I. Leave. Hey, we couldn't leave. <laughs> we couldn't leave, yeah. So we're starting to park and then they kept coming and they kept coming and then they were out the end of the street. They were in a bowling centre car park. There's a massive uh, car park that fits probably 100 cars at the end of the street. That was full. Wow. There's a United Servo. That was full. Like, it was just full. But honestly, not one person played up. Like, yeah. there wasn't one issue. There was not one. The police didn't roll up. It was just None perfect. of the neighbours were upset. Like everything just went good and it was massive. Like there was so many people there. It was yeah. huge. Yeah, um, I saw footage of it. There was, yeah, heaps. Yeah, so it ended up being really good. Um, would I have another one again? Probably not. Um, <laughs> it wasn't meant to be that big. No. <laughs> it was yeah. huge. And look, maybe if we organise something somewhere yeah. that was more suited, but... We're in a court, you know, it's one way. So there's mm. cars driving down and then have, having to get back out. There's cars parked. Yeah, everywhere. Yeah. So, yeah. But it was good. There was a lot of good quality cars and feedback was good. So, yeah. Yeah, awesome. I think that shows a lot of how, how much people respect you and, and your company and everything. Yeah. Yeah, I, I guess so. Or maybe yeah, Pro so. Street said, if you guys do anything, we're going to come down hard. I'm not sure, so <laughs> I just I'm, I'm glad everyone was on their best behaviour. Yeah, and yeah, the yeah. quality of cars was was Amazing. unreal. So yeah. Oh, awesome. Yeah. Mm. Oh, very good. I think that's. I think we'll wrap it up. Mm. What do you, you want to just do your qu your questions quickly? Uh, what was the question? Your. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. Here we go. All right. I'm gonna I'm gonna alternate. All right. So we'll start with you, John. Wait. You gotta tell them. The rules. You say this every single time. <laughs> you forget every time. Oh, I feel like this is another step. Everyone should know the, <laughs> everyone should know the rules by what? now. No, you've got 10 seconds to answer with one answer, okay? One answer. So whatever comes to mind, say it straight away. You'll be very quick, I reckon. 
What were you afraid of as a child? Spiders. Who is your hero? Parents. What is your favourite body part? <laughs> wow. 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 <laughs> I want Adam to answer this actually. <laughs> what oh, you? You've got me. Really? I don't know. What, what's my favourite? I don't know. My chavapi fingers. <laughs> so I, I, I don't know. <laughs> Oh, good. Okay. Um, if you were a fruit, what fruit would you be? I reckon I know it. I'm glad you do because I don't. Um, <laughs> what fruit would I be? <laughs> Pineapple? <laughs> okay. hey, I, I was wrong. Oh, God. Most people, after mentioning favourite body part, everyone says banana. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I think it's subconscious. Yeah. We're thinking of one yeah. thing. I yeah, can't say. True. Uh, what are you most looking forward to, John? That's a tough one. That could be short term, long term, whatever. No, what no, are you right. most looking forward to? Retirement. <laughs> yeah, that's fucking good, isn't it? Uh, what is one thing you wish you enjoyed more? School. School. Mm. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Money or happiness? That's another tough one. <laughs> <laughs> I know the answer to that. You'd have to say happiness. Yeah. Like, I love money. But yeah. Yeah. Yeah, if you're not happy, then it doesn't mean anything. So. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. What is your last Google search, Andy? <laughs> <laughs> it's funny because no one actually pulls their phone out until I tell them. <laughs> Could be bad. <laughs> We're in the truck all day with Rick. So. <laughs> yeah, yeah, who knows <laughs> what ideas we've came up with. There's been some pretty wild ideas. Oh, it's nice. always on these 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 drives. We ring Craig Burns and he goes, You're in the truck, aren't yeah. you? Oh, really? Like, yep. He goes, oh, I'm about to hang up. I said, No, 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 no. I have to just sit down first. <laughs> no wiring, like supplies. Wiring supplies. So nothing yeah, too okay. exciting. And who was the supplier uh, in Australia? Or? That GR. GR, Motorsport, Motorsport Electrical. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, what was your last impulse buy, John? Oh, Today? Great one. <laughs> <laughs> last. <laughs> oh, probably the, the Hurricane. The, the Green. Yeah. The Green, green Perth. Hurricane. Yeah. Not the Monaro. I was going to say. Yeah. No, nah, well, that was, <laughs> was, that that was a year ago. <laughs> no, no, no. No, that was after. The Monaro, you'd already purchased that, didn't you? No, Wasn't it sitting there know. and waiting and waiting? Uh, no, actually, yeah, the Monaro. No prep kings. Yeah, the Monaro. Yeah, yeah. the new CV8 drag car. This guy's sick in the head. <laughs> <laughs> we know that, yeah. I I assumed that no, no, it's it had been purchase. sitting there for ages and ages no. and ages. No, 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 no. It's a recent purchase. It's recent. Yeah. So I sold the we'll, Pro Mod and I sold the Grey Firebird. And I've bought the CV8. We looked at it like 12 months ago. Right. But then didn't go. We looked through. at it in October it? last yeah. year yeah. up in Queensland. And then just and then it ended up it. in Sydney. And then I made a phone call to see if it was still available. And it was. And yeah. You made a phone call after receiving the green car? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. This was probably three weeks before it ended up parked up here on show. How did you have the time the to even to think about To put the idea in Joe's head yeah. that he wants a race car. <laughs> no, well, the thing was, oh, it's a whole other story. We could go on all night. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Make it quick. We want a multi-purpose car that yeah. we can race, no prep, 275, 315, Pro Mod, whatever. And the thing with the carbon Pro Mod is we're limited because it's yeah. carbon body. We can't race no prep, can't race 275, we can't race a lot of classes. So the CV8 allows us to do that yeah. so we can still run with the quickest in, say, 315, Outlaw 315. We can run in 275 at probably the front of the field. Yeah, We can run in no prep. It's a really good car suited for no prep. So the Firebird we had wasn't. Yeah, It was shorter wheelbase. It was heavy. Um, there was a lot, a lot of disadvantages to it Yeah, uh, where the Monaro now is more suited to, say, race the no prep guys so like we We'd give them a good run now, that's yeah, for sure. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, so that's why we decided to go with a steel roof and quarter car. Yeah. But it's full chassis, so it's, yeah. yeah. And when do you think this thing's going to be finished? To this look year? at it, it looks like it's got about 10 years work <laughs> it in it. It does. 
<laughs> um, but I reckon, I don't know, if we got stuck into it, I think by the, the end of the year. End of the year, I think. Yeah. What do you think safe? What's that? Time frame. Yeah, end safe of, ETA. End of the year, I, I hope. I think end wow. of the year. So yeah, I think I hope by the end of the latest, year we'd be on say the Christmas, the thing yep. will be running ready to race. Yeah, nice. Ready to go for the start of next year. Yep. Yeah. Oh, very good. Okay, next one. What motivates you the most, Andy? Um, getting stuff done. Like, I guess your interests. I don't know. Yeah. I like to work to get my race car done, for example. Yeah. 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 I don't know. Yeah, so setting goals and achieving yeah, them I, and, and then setting the next one. Yeah, I guess so, yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 100%. Yeah, good. I think we can all sort of relate. Mm. Motivation, yeah. set goals. Yeah, you get something yeah. in your head, you want to achieve it. So, yeah, yeah. keep working until it happens. Yeah, so. very good. Mm. No, well, thanks for go- coming, guys. Sure. Um, no thank worries you. At all. Really appreciate thanks it. Thanks for having us. Oh, he's he's you always guys. go over and above for us. And um, yeah, we appreciate it. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. We'll be out there racing soon. Can't wait. Maybe not as fast, but the street events, we can, we can, we can play. You can play at the street events. When Joe's got his red Mustang, he'll be right. <laughs> yeah. So. yeah, we haven't told you what we what we um were offered for that thing. No. No. I don't think you want to get rid of it. No. no, I had this conversation with him on the way here. <laughs> so, so you know how much or not? Oh, he has a good idea. I was gonna say I have a fair idea. I do. It's not much, and that's what I said to him. I'm not getting rid of it. Yeah, I think it could just sit there. Yeah, you'd rather just look at it. Yeah, I think so. Because he said it was going to be new f- carbon front clip, painted. <laughs> um, I've got a better idea. Just want to buy a CV8, like <laughs> 10, 15 grand, if we're selling each other's stuff. So. <laughs> or a Pro Mod. That's, that's, hey, at least yeah, off. Yeah. That'd be 50 grand, man. That Pro Mod. <laughs> yeah. That Pro Mod would be 50 grand running turnkey. Yeah. I would say yeah. if you wanted to chop us out 45, we could talk. So. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, John's selling other um, people's stuff. <laughs> oh, God. All right, very good. Well, <laughs> until next time, yeah. I'm sure we'll, we'll um, get you on again, maybe yeah. after the CV8's done some, some numbers. Huh. Easy. Thanks. Uh, thank you, good. guys. Cool, cool. Yeah.